This is a Raspberry Pi. And this is a micro USB cable to power it up. It's connected to a full HD TV with an HDMI cable. It boots up from an SD card into a Linux kernel and a Debian root file system. My name is Andrew Baldwin. This presentation is all about Qt 5 on the Raspberry Pi. It's a short version of a presentation I gave to the DevArmo Summit 2012. After the login, everything you see is an application written with Qt 5 and mostly in QML and running on the Raspberry Pi. And you can download the code for the application from the address shown. The Raspberry Pi is a small, cheap computer created by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It's credit card sized. It has an ARM 11 with a GPU and 256 megs of RAM, HDMI, USB, Ethernet cables, and it costs 40 euros or less with delivery. That's a picture of my Pi. The Broadcom chip at the heart of the Pi is 144 square millimeters of which two square millimeters or less are the ARM11. So my conclusion is that most of this chip is GPU, not CPU. The Pi boots all its software from SD card, the Linux kernel and a choice of distros. And you can even run X Windows with software rendering on that tiny ARM11. If you want to make use of that GPU, you need to use OpenGL ES2. Then you find that this device is quite capable of doing rendering at full HD at 60 FPS. Qt5 is an open governance project available from the Qt Project org website. It has a 20 year heritage of good C++ API design. Recently it's had a big move away from classic C++ based widgets to a declarative language called QML and uh, OpenGL optimized rendering graphics stack. Now let's take a look at the QML language with some live coding example. This is a simple QML program uh, with one item, which is a rectangle, and has a width and height and color specified. And one of the key things about QML is that properties have bindings, and bindings can be made up from other properties. And QML just calculates the value automatically whenever any of the dependent values change. So here I can specify the height in terms of the width, and I can add a radius here for the rectangle so it has rounded corners and you can embed other items inside parent items so now we're putting an image here and I'm loading that from a file and you can scale the image to the parent here I can use the powerful anchor layout system to fill the parent and now we add some text item as well and I'm going to put that inside the same parent rectangle item uh, centered in the middle and make the font size big enough so that you can actually see it. And this has made a compound item and I can change any of the properties and I can add properties. I can specify the rotation. These don't have to be constants. They can also be animated values. So I can specify a number animation on the rotation here. I would like it to spin all the way around. So we spin it from zero degrees to 360 degrees but that was a bit fast so let's set a, a duration uh, of five seconds in milliseconds and we would like it to rotate forever so we set it to loop with animation dot infinite there's also a scale property so i can make it bigger and with everything drawn with opengl scaling is done smoothly uh, there's no jagged artifacts and finally i set the background to green uh, that's a very simple qml example the qt5 version of qml is a complete rewrite of the qt4 version optimized for opengl which is much more effective at offloading rendering to the gpu it also makes shader effects a first class item as we'll see now the shader effect item embeds an OpenGL shader language program in the fragment shader property. 
here we can see a very simple one which just sets a solid color for every pixel first it was transparent then black and now white this program is run for every pixel in every frame so that means about 100 million times every second on the full hd 60 fps uh, raspberry pi output and with the 24 gigaflops that the gpu has that lets you run about 200 or so instructions so you can write quite complicated programs here now we're making it to be not a solid color but a gradient that looks something like a sky so we'll make a variable called sky and set that and that's a, a four a vec4 with uh, four values in it low precision because it's just for color data and there we go Oops, if i get the semicolon in the right place then we should see it so we can also read textures into shaders so we'll make another variable here with a color value with a texture lookup taken from the texture specified at the top of the shader effect item and we'll see what that is in a minute ah it's the raspberry again so maybe it's a bit stretched so we would maybe want to change the coordinates a little bit so that it fits better onto the screen let's make another another variable name for the coordinates and we'll just multiply that by two in the x axis so that it, we get two of them on the screen like that and of course we can add a scale factor now we have eight and now we have 32 that seems like enough for now and using the mix function we can blend together our sky and our raspberries using the alpha value from the, the texture to decide which pixel to pick we can play around a bit more with the coordinates for the texture lookup here we're, we're just scaling dependent on the y coordinate and we can bring animation and time into the into the equation this is uh, because this is rendered for every frame it's easy to render something different on every frame if you just provide uh, a variable that that changes on every frame and here we have a uniform value floating point value which is time which changes in every frame but i think it would be more useful if we would have a pulsing value here so let's let's create a new uniform value here which is the sign of the time and we'll calculate this in QML in JavaScript there and all you have to do is specify the new name for this uniform and now we have the sign of the time value and we can bring that into the calculations here and that's maybe more, more interesting or perhaps if we add it to this multiplier there we go so that shows some of the power and flexibility of shader effects in QML especially combined with the QML animation system and in fact very much of this presentation is built around custom shader effects which you can see if you go and get the code. Qt5 also has a library of existing shader effects implemented in QML and this also shows how you can use any QML item as a source for those shader effects and that's a very flexible system. Getting Qt5 onto your Pi is quite straightforward. You just need a ARM cross compiler and a Debian root file system and follow the instructions on the wiki shown there. Qt5 is ported to different platforms using plugins. We use the EGLFS plugin. Uh, there are other ones as well for things like Wayland. And it's integrated with the uh, Disman compositor, Broadcom compositor on the Raspberry Pi, which lets you support uh, multiple layers. Uh, let's show that. So we bring up a terminal here. This terminal is actually a QML item ported from an old Qt4 widget and with a few QML features added, such as particles on the cursor. And I'll show another QML program here. And this one has a transparent background color set for the, the root item. And if we start up the program here with the QML scene runtime and the GLFS plugin, And as you can see, it runs on top of the presentation. And that's actually a different process running and being composited with the Broadcom Disman compositor. And we can pause it and kill it. 
Another option is Wayland for composition. Qt has a Qt Wayland module which lets any Qt application be a Wayland client and also lets you implement Wayland compositors and there's one called the QML compositor which in fact we're running this presentation in. So now I can launch another test application but this time I'll use the Wayland platform plugin. Test 2 and let's see what happens. And then we have another separate process rendering and this is a Wayland client this time. We can pause that and Wayland supports multiple clients and compositors support multiple clients so we can launch another one there. Now we have two of them and if I pause one of them then it stops and I can run them again and you can see they're actually integrated with the, the presentation here and I can then kill them when I don't want them anymore. Of course this is just an example, you could make a, a compositor as a full desktop environment if you liked. Video is something that's not yet integrated but probably will come in the near future and will integrate nicely with the QML shader effects. And that's the presentation finished. Thank you for watching.